throughout the course of the semester, you're going to be using two different types of microscope. I bet most of you have used a microscope at some point in some class for at least one class period, but some of you may not have used a microscope for, oh, maybe even years. And so just to make sure that everybody's on the same page and that everybody knows how to use the microscopes that we have here at Stan State, we're going to be sure to train you pretty thoroughly the first day that you're using those scopes. And then we want you to practice those skills several times this semester, and you'll use them also in general bio too. So here we have what's called a compound microscope, and here's what we have uh, called a dissecting microscope. So the compound scope and the dissecting microscope, they're both light microscopes. That means that we either bounce light off a subject or pass light through a subject in order to look at it. When you're looking at things through the microscope, keep in mind that everything you look at is three-dimensional. And so if you adjust your focus slightly up or slightly down, what you're really looking at is more towards the surface or deeper inside the cells or the, the layers of that specimen that you're looking at. So when you first get your microscope out in lab, what you want to do is identify all the parts. And you'll notice that you have a segment of your lab manual that gives you a picture of the microscope. And you're meant to go through and label all of those parts. Make sure that you understand what each of them do. There are a lot of knobs. Fiddle those knobs and see what they do. Like actually look at the microscope while, say, you move this knob here, this is called the coarse focus. And if you notice, it makes the stage where your microscope slide is going to be resting, makes that go up and down. If you use the small knob, it does the same, but almost imperceptibly. That's your fine focus knob. You'll notice that you have stage manipulator knobs that move the stage around. And remember, that stage is where your microscope slide is resting. You'll notice there are several ways to control the light. And you'll notice, too, that one of your ocular lenses is able to move to adjust the view just for your eyes. And furthermore, if your eyes are wide set, you can adjust those ocular lenses farther apart. If your eyes are more narrow set like mine, you can adjust those eyepieces to be closer together. So spend some time really acquainting yourself with the types of things you can do with the microscope and how manipulating any of these changes the scope itself. So it may or may not be the same day that you'll also be introduced to the dissecting scope. Sometimes we introduce the dissecting microscope on a different day, just so you have more time to get comfortable with the compound scope. But the dissecting microscope has different advantages. You'll notice that the magnification power is not as high but it allows you to place specimens directly on the stage. So you could even bring in a leaf from home or a mysterious insect, put it on there and get a look at it immediately. It has several different lighting adjustments and there are some knobs that you shouldn't have to use, but a lot of students end up using them. Notice this knob on the far back on that dissecting microscope. What this actually does is it allows the whole head of the microscope to move up or down on a post. So if you were looking at something really large, then you would want to have the head of the microscope high up so you would have space to put your specimen on there. But for our work, usually about halfway down is where it's going to be, maybe, maybe two-thirds of the way down. And you want to keep that knob nice and tight, otherwise the head is going to be slipping and it could actually be damaged. So when you first bring a dissecting microscope out, check that knob, make sure it's nice and tight, and then you're ready to get to work. So I'm going to lower that a little more so it fits on our shelves. So in lab, make sure to bring in lots of fun things. Look at anything you like to under the microscope just to get a better look at it. And throughout the semester, you'll be using both the, light, the compound light microscope and also the dissecting light microscope to look at organisms and, I guess, materials of different sizes. So don't forget that your textbook is also an excellent resource for studying the cell. So chapter six starts on page 93. It's a tour of the cell. And it shows you how cells may look under a microscope. It explains some of the organization of living things in terms of cell size and how they integrate to be working tissues and how tissues are parts of organs and then organs in organ systems. You'll notice the size of bacterial cells when you look at their measurements compared to the size of eukaryotic cells, which are the cells that animals, plants, fungi, and protists have. And you'll read about the importance of all the different organelles. So there's a two-page spread 
on page 100 and 101 that's amazing for comparing the structures inside plant and animal cells. And I would highly recommend to bring these pages with you to lab to help you in your study of cells while you're learning both how to use the microscope and while you're making observations of cells themselves.